feet uh, as we go before the throne of the Lord. I'm glad I got two feet to stand on. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Sometimes your feet hurt a little bit. You might have a callus or something on that, but I'm, I'm glad I got two of them. Hallelujah. So we're just going to bless the Lord. If you know these, you can join with us as we give God praise. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the nail scored hand. I'm going to sing it. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the Son of God. 
desire tonight we commit ourselves to you that this may be done cause us tonight to hear your heart and to respond to what you are not only revealing but the direction that you give us as your people thank you for this day and for bringing us through it safely we praise you for the privilege to stand in this house tonight to meet with your people and most importantly to meet with you be glorified in our midst we pray that our city would be better as a result of our gathering tonight. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Welcome. Those of you that are here tonight, if you have a moment, say hello to those that are nearby. Thank you guys for singing. Praise the Lord.
want to welcome you here tonight to this very special gathering. I believe the Lord's going to do great things in our midst, and we've gathered tonight to hear from the Lord. I pray that um, your hearts will be encouraged and that, that our city will be better as we pray as a result of it. We know that we're not the only group praying like this. And for those of you that are new to the urban world, uh, evening of prayer for our city. And we've been doing this now. This is the 37th time that we've been doing it. Every year we meet like this upon the direction of the Lord to pray. And uh, for our city, we got to the point at one point we were able to do it three or four times a year with various pastors who became a part of this gathering. This particular gathering was birthed back in 1987 after a massacre in North St. Louis. Uh, I think seven people were gunned down there in one of the supermarkets back in the day when supermarkets were in the city and they were still open late at night. And then this, shortly after that, a very well-beloved nun who had worked with the poor was found murdered here in South St. Louis. And God had laid up on my heart some time before that to ask various friends to come together to pray for our city. When that occurred, he kind of released me to do it and we've been doing it ever since. And so as we gather together tonight, that's really our goal. Prayer is not something necessarily that we really need to be taught a lot about many of us who are here in this room. Uh, but it is important that we that we just kind of rehearse a couple of things, at least for us tonight, so that we can have an understanding of what we're really trying to do, how we're trying to pray. Prayer is really, as you know, a conversation with God. And in any conversation, any conversation, there's usually someone listening and someone speaking. And then there is the reverse, the person who's been listening eventually responds uh, to the one who has been speaking. So I want to encourage you tonight uh, to, to be open to what God may speak to your heart, what he may tell you to do. We will, we will not be able to open the floor tonight to hear everything that God may say uh, to different ones of you tonight. But uh, bear in mind that as we're here together, God is going to do that. And uh, I don't ever believe that God really wants just monologue when we're praying, that he really is speaking to us. And so I encourage you to be listening for that. The second thing that I want to remind you of is that uh, we will be petitioning the Lord. That is, we have about 21 areas that we're going to try to cover tonight. We may not get to all of them within the time frame that we have, but we're going to be petitioning the Lord tonight in some very, very key areas for our city, for our nation and uh, for the world. And then secondly, we will be interceding as well. And that is we will be praying on behalf of other individuals in the course of the prayer time tonight. The first set of, uh, of uh, petitions are gonna be led by some pastors that are friends of mine and of, us this, of this house, of this ministry. Some of you have known and you've seen in the past and so I want to encourage you to be a part of that, joining with them. And then we're going to take some time to minister to the Lord in music again. And then I've asked several of our leaders to come and lift up some other areas uh, that we're going to pray tonight. Before we do that, I want to begin with a very uh, famous or popular passage of Scripture that most of us know about. Second Chronicles chapter 7 during the dedication of the temple that Solomon built under the direction of the Lord in light of the vision that God had given to his father, David. And in the course of bringing all that together and then building it, the time came for the dedication of it, the presentation of this building which represented the people of the Lord unto God. And in that exchange, the scripture says, that the glory of the Lord was so thick and so intense that the priests could not stand, literally stand up 
to minister. But God did speak some things in response to a, uh, the cry that Solomon made to the Lord for the nation. Here was one of the things that God said because Solomon was very concerned about the nation of Israel. The track record wasn't always that great and uh, there were times when the nation would stray away. There were always remnants within the nation that sought to walk with God. But for the most part, they would fall into Baal worship or Baal worship or the worship of the other deities that were espoused and prayed to by the different groups in that region. And so they would become a part of that. And God had already spoken what would happen when they would do that. And so Solomon was crying out to God about that. When you read Leviticus 26, you read Deuteronomy 28, you discover the disfavor and the things that God would allow the nation of Israel to fall into. So Solomon asked the Lord about it. And God gave him this promise. If my people who are called by my name, that's the qualifying, will humble themselves and pray. The word prayer there means literally not only to petition, but to intercede and seek my face. That's to inquire of the Lord, engage more with the dialogue. And then the fourth condition is to turn from their wicked ways. God promised this, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So we have these four conditions, humble ourselves and pray, seek his face, humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. Then God says, here is what I will do. I will hear you. I will hearken to you. I will forgive you. I'll forgive you. Uh, and then I will heal the land. So the healing of St. Louis is inextricably tied to the humility, to the intercession, to the seeking, and to the turning, the repentance of God's church. You see that? How many of you can agree with that according to that, that text? And so we want to start there tonight. We want to start where God really tells us to start. And that is to turn to him in a very special way. I want to look at a passage of scripture tonight very quickly uh, that deals a little bit with this from 2 Chronicles chapter 17. This is going to read a little bit different than your version because this is the version I've been studying for the last couple of years. But it's in reference to Jehoshaphat. And I want to speak spe to pray specifically a prayer of repentance tonight. Uh, we're going to do this in a couple of ways. I want to pray specifically about this particular issue uh, with, the, with the body of Christ uh, tonight. Jehoshaphat was a, was a man who really loved God. And if you read in the chapters prior to this, he did some great things uh, with the Lord and before God. Look at this. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 17 says, His son Jehoshaphat became king in his place. Uh, following his father and strengthened himself against Israel. He stationed troops in every fortified city of Judah, set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. Verse three, this is the Christian standard version. Now, now, the, the, uh, now the, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Look into what it says, because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked by his commands, not according to the practices of Israel. So the Lord established the kingdom in his, land, in his hand. Then all Judah brought him tribute, and he had riches and honor and abundance. He took great pride in the Lord's ways, and he, and, and, uh, he again removed, this is important to note, the high places and Asherah poles from Judah. The high places were the groves and the mountainous regions where very sensuous, ungodly, sexually charged forms of worship took place in response to the demand of the Baals. In the third year of his reign, Jehoshaphat sent his officials, and it names them there, to teach in the cities of Judah. The Levites with them, and he lists their names. Look at verse nine, they taught throughout Judah, 
having the book of the Lord's instruction with them. They went throughout the towns of Judah and taught the people. The terror of the fear of the Lord was on all the kingdoms of the lands that surrounded Judah, so they didn't fight against Jehoshaphat. Now, I want to skip down here and pick it up in chapter 18, verse 1. Now, Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance. He made an alliance with Ahab through marriage. Listen to this. He made an alliance with Ahab through marriage, and that marrying one of his daughters. Then after uh, some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. Ahab slaughtered many sheep, goats, and cattle for him and for the people who were with him and persuaded him to attack Ramoth Gilead. For Israel's king, Ahab, asked Judah's king, Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? He replied to him, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you uh, in the battle. But Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, first, please ask what the Lord's will is. And Ahab didn't want to do that. We won't read all of that because he knew that this particular prophet would be bold enough to speak out against him. And the scripture goes on to tell us that uh, um, Ahab ends up falling in battle there. Je Joseph had almost lost his life. And th in the next section, uh, I'll just cut it to the chase here. The Lord sent a word to Jehoshaphat through a prophet and asked him why he would side with the wicked, why he would side with those who did not love God. This is one of the areas that I believe we as the church really do need to repent of. And it's done very subtly. I want to just kind of mention that sometimes it's hard for us as the church to think of things we need to repent of. Okay, it's hard, real difficult because we're striving and we love God and we're trying to serve the Lord and be obedient to God. But one of the ways that we do it very subtly is, is not to resist the counsel and the wisdom of the enemy and to just remain silent. We have that going on in our country right now. I'm going to pray about some of that tonight. But it is so important that we not be silent. Uh, another way sometimes that we, that, we, that we side with that, which not just people, but with things that are not of God, is that we really do uh, slack up in our prayer life, we slack up in our study of the word, we slack up in our, in our, in our uh, preaching the gospel or ministering the gospel to others outside of this setting, or outside of these settings. And so this is really kind of what I want to invite us to pray about tonight. And uh, we're going to move on to some other areas that we really do need to, to focus on uh, as well. But if you will, just uh, take a moment, bow your head in the, in the presence of the Lord, and ask the Lord, in what ways have you sided, have you gone with that, which is really not of God? Foreign alliances, foreign alliances, ungodly alliances, leads to detriment and death. Nehemiah saw it and prayed like that. Daniel saw it and prayed like that. And interestingly, he didn't just say those people over there because I'm holy. He said, Lord, we have forsaken your word. We have walked contrary to what you desire for us. Would you say that to the Lord tonight? Lord, in every way that I have sided with people, beliefs, systems, practices that you hate, I repent tonight. I turn to you in my heart and I ask your forgiveness for every foreign alliance that I have made, every ungodly alliance that I have made. You're counting on me to stand, to be obedient, to speak, to serve you. So in every way, Lord, that I've sided with that which is not of you, I ask your forgiveness. Everything that has led to someone else's death, 
the decay in our community as a result of my foreign alliances, as a result of my lackadaisical spirit, I ask you to forgive me tonight. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse me by your spirit. Through the name of Jesus, I ask you tonight. Come on now, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. There may be other areas. There may be other areas that the Spirit of God is speaking to you about tonight. There may be others that he's speaking to you about tonight. We come before your presence. We honor your presence tonight. Look, just lay it before the Lord tonight. We bow on our hearts before you tonight. We commit our way to you. Reject the spirit of condemnation, but by all means, receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight. Thank you, Father God. We bless you, Father God. We bless you, Father God. We honor you in this place. 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 There's so many petitions that are on our hearts to make before you tonight, God, but we don't want to override and ignore the dealings that you are making in our hearts in this area. Work in us. Minister in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, tonight we, we stand as just a small representation of your people in this city. But we ask, Lord, in every way that we have been guilty of these things siding with the wicked against you siding with those things that dishonor you being silent when we really need to stand please forgive us we turn we turn we call it wicked we call it not just ugly we call it sin and we turn to you cleanse our hearts we yield to the ministry of the Holy Spirit working within us the holy boldness that is necessary, especially in this hour. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Speak, my Lord. Have your way. Amen. 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 And Father, tonight we do receive, this is just as important as asking for forgiveness, we receive your forgiveness. Would you say that to the Lord? Lord, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your cleansing. Thank you for opening my understanding to see not only what my negligence has caused or led to, but opening my eyes to see what my obedience will lead to. Give us fresh vision tonight, even as we're in this room praying, as we are looking to you. We refuse, Lord God, to, to merely see ourselves as as victims, we own our part in the demise of our city. Thank you, Jesus. You know, believers, tonight this is almost a taboo subject in the body of Christ. So the lack of healing is the result of the lack of repentance. No question about it. No question about it. So we turn in our lives. We turn in our hearts to you. There really does need to be an examination of our friendships and our relationships and our alliances. There really does need to be an examination 
by the help of the Spirit of our friendships, our relationships, our alliances. Not to the point where we no longer associate with people who are not believers. Paul told the church of Corinth, if that was the case, I'd have to call you out of the world. So that's not what this is about. This is not about making sure that we're so holy we're never touching anybody that's unholy. That doesn't help the world. But it is about making sure that we're walking closely with God and that the purity that is necessary for there to really be change, that it can happen because the flow of what God desires to do is not obscured and it's not clogged up with fleshly ideas and fleshly motives, fleshly actions that hinders a person from really beholding and seeing. It's easy to be religious, isn't it? But he has not called us necessarily out of the world in that way. He's called us into the world, but not to be of it. And the holiness that's necessary is a holiness that is not earned holiness that's granted and the sanctification that the Spirit of God works in us as we yield. So much so that as the Spirit of God speaks not only to us, He can do a work in us that renders us in a place where we're not anxious, angry, prideful, but we're responding in the flow of the Spirit of the Lord. Foreign alliances keep us from doing that and often justifies fleshly behavior for Jehoshaphat to hook up with Ahab is a problem it's a problem and he didn't even seem to notice there is a, there is a in the effort of synergy and unity there is often syncretism an ungodly mixture concepts and values and beliefs that will never work and so we as the church we must respond we must respond at this level at this level a conviction of the spirit is never merely or ever for the purpose of condemnation never there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but by the Spirit. And so the ministry of the Holy Spirit is always to bring insight and to provide the energy that's necessary to walk like God says walk, to think like God says think. So we, we not only pray for this, we receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. How many of you follow where Pastor Ray is? You understand? Father God, we thank you for this grace and we thank you for this truth and uh, we yield our hearts to you. Thank you that uh, beyond feeling you tonight, we will sense and discern only by your help, not only who you are, but where we are and what you're calling upon us to do and to be. Be glorified in us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Now let's just sit together. Lord, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for grace. Thank you, Lord, once again for the privilege to be able to walk with you, continue your work in my life. We don't want to be religious. <laughs> We've had enough of that, haven't we? And it's led to war after war after war. Lord, what we really want is the ministry of your spirit and us as mature believers in the body of Christ. Thank you, Father God. Well, tonight I want you to welcome uh, Pastor Douglas Petty, Dr. Petty to come. He's going to lead us in our first petition as we deal with the area of, um, of civil leaders and our response as believers there. This is a very, very key area. Let's welcome him as he comes. Praise God. Hey. Uh, well, Bishop, I was just prepared to just sit down and keep listening to you. To just, to just roll through on out of everything. Everything. So, 
I, I don't know you know, but we're in this space right now that God's already doing something, uh, already. And he just wants us to cooperate, just, just to cooperate with him. So, so this, this piece about civic leaders and political involvement, two passages we'll read and then just for a moment. Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they put a basket, put a light under a basket. Instead, they set it up so that it will shine. Likewise, let your light so shine that others might see your good work and then glorify the Father in heaven. Uh, that's part of the mandate for our involvement in the world. Then, 1 Timothy chapter 2, therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings or elected officials and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Just a couple of, couple of points. One, sometimes we think about elected officials and we talk about them rather than talking to the Father on their behalf. We think of names and we can just rake them all over the coal and, and, and not understanding that our saltiness is impacting the stability or instability of what we're experiencing now. You know, you could have turmoil everywhere, but it doesn't have to be turmoil in your life or turmoil in your world if you act on what he is saying. So I want to repent for having not prayed as fervently as I should for elected officials. I'm always thinking about them, not bashing them, but not, not as intense as it ought to be. So I'm repenting for that. And, and I hope that just reverates, just shakes you to know that what we're experiencing on this landscape in America has a lot to do with what the church has not done. Uh, the ballot box is important, we should do, that's our involvement, but it doesn't change. We are salt, we are light, and we are intercessors given the authority to shake up institutions that are unlike him. So Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to do a reset. Uh, just to do a reset, to, to get in the place where we're supposed to be so that when the storms come, it can still be anchored down and we're not tossed to and fro, that we're, we're not rattled, we're not thrown off. We understand what you've said, the times would be as they are right now, but it doesn't take away from our being involved with our civic leaders, being in the places where you have put us, that we continue to lift them up, that they hear your voice, even when they don't want to. That if you can take Pharaoh, turn him around when he's resistant, then even these individuals with these titles and these places, these influences that they have, they can be broken down to even do that which they have no desire to do if your people who are called by your name just do what they're supposed to do, place it before you, make sure that our slate is clean, make sure that we're doing what we need to do and to not be afraid to be a part of a transition that needs to take place to have fresh voices, fresh perspective, very fresh kingdom-minded individuals in the midst where the light can't help but chase and expose the darkness. So we thank you for the light, the lightheartedness, the saltiness of this, your people that are in here, so that we just don't get stuck. Because when the salt shakes, things happen. So Lord, throw us out of the salt shaker. 
so that we can be different from what we've been. And this is just not an occasion where we've come together, that we've come together to go and to be what you've already said. Thank you for the vision of the bishop as he continues to answer the call that you placed before he and Pastor Brenda. We just thank you for that. That has never stopped. There's been such a commitment. We ask that you would strengthen them, that, that you would just strengthen them from every aspect of their whole being, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and then financially. Just, just keep away from them anything that will try to hinder the obedience and the steadfastness that you place before them. And we thanking you right now that even as you're moving, that you just keep on moving in here tonight, that we get just this beside ourselves, even in a so-called prayer gathering, we just get totally beside ourselves and lose our freaking minds in here. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. Let's welcome the new director of the St. Louis Police Department Academy and pastor of the Great Adullam Church. Let's welcome Pastor Clarence Hines. Here. All right, good evening, and uh, since I have, uh, since I'm on the program for Saturday, uh, I'm actually gonna honor my three to five minutes tonight, right? So I wanna, want Bishop to invite me back um, to, uh, to Pastor Brenda and to Bishop. Um, just thank you so much for Your, your faithfulness to justice and righteousness. And uh, that would be in line with our God. The Bible tells us that God loves justice and he loves righteousness. Amen. Um, I really didn't know what I was going to say, and I, I said I was just going to kind of let the Holy Spirit lead me. So I want to say this. The Bible says that the Lord frustrates the plans of a nation. And truthfully, uh, as Pastor uh, Petty said, I was, I was comfortable not comfortable in the way Bishop said, um, uh, but comfortable, I was comfortable in my life as a pastor of our church in, in North City and um, the Lord frustrates the plans. <laughs> and here's what I wanna say that um, and, and I don't want to say too much tonight for um, getting into Saturday, but um, the Lord has laid such a heavy burden. Um, and I, I might start crying, but um, he's laid such a heavy burden on my heart for police officers. And um, so my plan, I had my plan and God had his. <laughs> and um, uh, becoming the director of training at the police academy, it was not my plan. And Bishop, no, we, we talked about this. I remember I told Bishop, he was like, yes, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, right? And uh, so here's what I would say, and then I want to pray. Um, the, the Bible talks about justice. In order for justice to be true justice, it's got to be fair. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Because if it's not fair, if it's not rooted in truth, that's actually injustice. Listen to me. And the Bible talks about God's this love for the oppressed, the, the poor. The, but what if I told you that 
we are in a season where law enforcement is the oppressed. B Bishop just said, we're going to blame Bishop. We got some stuff we need to repent for. <laughs> and um, there's a lot I could say, but I don't want my burdens to become yours. There's a lot I could say, but I would say this. Um, in just one year, the Lord has done so many amazing things. And, and listen, because I, I, I do want to, I want to give you some hope tonight that uh, crime is trending downward. Right? Come on. Thank, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and so um, I want to make a request and I want to pray. W would you, would you please commit with me to earnestly pray for our officers. Please hear me good. Um, I am over training, but I want you to know there is no amount of training that negates trauma. Did you hear what I just said? There is no training. There is no amount of training that deals with primary and secondary trauma. Pastor, you, you, you know this is true. And so would you commit to praying for our heroes? And the inhibitors that they face And, and the traumas that they carry and their families must carry. There's a lot more I could say. I'm going to say some more on Saturday, so I want to start praying. I know, I know I've, I've been up here for, for a little bit, but let, let's pray together. And Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for being a God of true justice. God, we thank you for the leaders in public safety and those who shape policy, oh God, and um, who lead our communities, God. We would just pray right now that you would, I pray very personally for our, our mayor. We pray for our police chief and we pray for um, we, we, we thank you, God, that there is no shortage of resources for our officers, but we would like to pray for our leaders that our leaders would walk in true righteousness. We, we, we pray for leaders who don't want to be right, but who want to be righteous, oh God and and so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our officers who, in spite of the pain, in spite of their unhealed trauma, in spite of the trauma that they brought with them to this job, in spite of, in spite of low wages and in spite of having to work sometimes two and three jobs, to support their families, in spite of being, them being marginalized and them being pushed aside, them being oppressed and defunded. And, 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 and so Father, we thank you right now that you are able to frustrate the plans of a nation. You are able to frustrate the plans of this city, oh God, and God, these these are, Romans 13, these are your ministers of justice. That, that uh, you've given them to us to keep us safe. And so Father, we pray right now and we thank you for 
a season where officers are openly talking about their trauma, where they are being healed in the name of Jesus, that they are being undressed, that there is a shalom about this, that they are, they are naked and not ashamed. And, and so God, we thank you for this. We thank you for this platform. And we ask that you give us hearts beyond tonight that as we pray for one another and we pray for the kingdom and we pray for the advancement of the gospel and we pray for those who don't know you that we would remember that our officers, many of them don't know you and that many of them need you. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would continue to heal our officers and public safety officials. God, thank you for healing our land. Thank you for being a God of justice. Thank you for being a God of restoration. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Oh, I can't wait till Saturday. You got to be here for this. Amen. Well, we have a, uh, a very special brother that was with us for several years, um, Pastor Jake Rosen. Some of you remember him from uh, Clayton Community Church. Um, he has um, since relinquished that post and has moved, he and his wife Jeannie, to um, the Los Angeles, California area where he's working with Jews for Jesus. And uh, it's good to see you, Jake. God bless you. Uh, you, uh, you can, can hear me? me? It's, it's, it's an honor to be here with, with you guys. guys. I, understand I understand there's a delay. delay so. uh, God, God bless, bless you all. all. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for standing, standing with, with us and, and, and praying, praying uh, for us, us, for our for family, family, for the Jewish people, people for decades. decades. And, and uh, I, just I just can't, can't thank, thank you enough. enough. It's, it's good, good to be in your presence. It's good to be home. We love you, man. We love you. So, so um, um, I understand I've got three to five, five minutes. minutes. You want me to just get, get to, to it? it, Bishop? Go right ahead. All right. All right. All right. Well, well um, Bishop, Bishop Ray asked, asked me to share, share with you about, about praying for the, for the peace, peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And... and um, um, I'll just, I'll just read, read the scripture. The scripture. Um, I, can I can share it on the screen. screen. It's, it's uh, uh, let's see, maybe, maybe I, can. I can't. Let's, let's see. see. Yes, yes, I can. I can. Um, pray, pray for the, for the peace, peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. May, May they be, be secure, secure who love you. you. Peace, peace be within, within your walls and, and security within your towers. towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. So uh, Jerusalem's been um, under attack. On that first day, on October the 7th, I was um, opening... A show. I was asked by the branch leader at Jews for Jesus at Upside Down uh, Coffee Shop here in Los Angeles to paint a mural. And actually, I painted the mural from uh, Second Chronicles chapter six, verse eighteen, and it it was Solomon's question. It was, uh, but will God indeed dwell with people on the earth? This was after. He had been um, already, you know, his father David had the idea, and Nathan said, go for it, that's a prophet. Um, and then uh, he said, uh, no. Um, the next day he said, no, God told me that you can't build the temple, but I'm going to build a house for you. And uh, then came the promise to David about 
uh, about the Messiah that's going to come through the house of David. Um, but he said that uh, another one, uh, his son, would build the house. So David was working, getting ready, preparing the ground to build this house. Well, in Second Chronicles six eighteen, in the beginning of that prayer uh, that uh, Solomon prayed, he said, "But will God indeed dwell with people on the earth?" He said a little earlier on, he said that the Lord, that he dwells in thick darkness. And so this, um, I don't, I have a picture in front of me. I can't share the picture with you right now, but it's uh, six, uh, 16 feet wide and eight feet high. And, um, and I, I'll, s I'll send a picture to uh, Sister Christy uh, so you guys could see it and pray for it. But I asked people to, to paint into the darkness. See, the question it has to do with God dwelling with us on the earth. And, and this earth is beautiful, but it's full of sin. And, and God's holy. So uh, that's a good question that he asked. Will God indeed dwell with people on the earth? And it should be our question as well, you know. He's chosen to make his home in you and in me. He's chosen to give us his his Holy Spirit, and along with the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. And we're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Um, as you look at that prayer, and I'm going to switch away from the prayer. Um, I'm going to uh, stop sharing. Okay, can you see me now? Okay, you probably can't stop sharing. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you see me. Okay, <laughs> but um, in God's word, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they, they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls. Peace, shalom, be within your walls. Security within your towers. Um, you know, God said in Isaiah um, 62, he said he's appointed watchmen to be on the walls of Jerusalem that won't be silent day or night. Those watchmen are you and those watchmen are me. We are those watchmen that God's placed on the walls of Jerusalem. Um, so with that in mind, you don't just want to sit back. You want to watch and pray, right? And you're praying for uh, the peace. You're praying for um, this peace. So what's what's the peace? What does that have to do with the whole thing? So I'm going to share the screen again. And this morning, you know, I'm uh, I'm an old guy these days. I spent a few decades with you guys, but um, I want to share this with you. It's uh, Sam Rude is our trainer. He's like. A little older than half my age or maybe about half my age but he's very uh very wise you know and uh he shared a devotional with me and my wife and some other ones in our training cohort and it's from this part in uh, john chapter 16. uh you know uh we're uh, told to pray for the peace of jerusalem but you know who else prayed for the peace of jerusalem was jesus and that was in John 17. This is just before uh, Jesus' high priestly prayer. And um, in verse 28, it says, I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. He's talking to his disciples, and he's telling them the gospel right there, right? I came from the Father. You've got, you've got Jesus' divinity. I've come into the world. You've got the... You've got the incarnation. He, he became a baby, became flesh. And now I'm leaving the world. I'm going to the Father. What happens there? That's his life, basically, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. He's going to go back to the Father. So he was just explaining to his disciples what's going on. What does his disciples say? Ah, now you're speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and you don't need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. And Jesus says this to them. 
do you now believe? Question mark. <laughs> um, they think they're on top of it. They think they know what's going on here. But they don't know what they don't know. And they don't know how they're going to be um, scattered. It says, uh, Jesus continues, Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. That was them in a little bit, in a little while. Each to his own home and will leave me alone. So he's going to be abandoned by all his disciples. Um, it's scary to be alone. But Jesus says, yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I've said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. Peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But take heart, or be of good courage. Or uh, it's, it's hard to, uh, I understand it's hard to explain this particular uh, verse, but... Um, be of good courage, you know, but be of good cheer, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So um, he wants them to have hope. Let me stop sharing this and I'll keep a look at you. Um, behind me, you see a little, uh, it's back that way. No, that's this way. Okay. Little umbrella there, little tykes. Um, um, little picnic uh, area with some toys on it. That's for our, our granddaughter, Noah. You guys prayed for Josiah. And these days he is, um, continues to be a singer-songwriter, continues to be, but now he's married to a singer-songwriter. And they've made a little, little girl named Noah. Uh, God's blessed them with our grand, first granddaughter. And pretty soon for Thanksgiving, uh, God's going to uh, bring us together with our whole family, our nuclear family, with our daughter, Eliza, and her husband, Mark, and their daughter, Rosalie, who was born um, about a month after um, Noah was born. And we are so grateful uh, for uh, you guys praying for our family and for our work and and uh, those guys are working for uh, our, our son and and uh, daughter-in-law here in Los Angeles they're working for a church out here they're part of a worship team so thank you so much so be praying uh, for um, the peace of Jerusalem what, what are we talking about here why did I bring up um, this 16th chapter of the book of John well Jesus was letting them know that they need to watch out, that their spiritual health, health is very important. So I want you to be praying for our spiritual health. You know, for the first couple days after that uh, October 7th, uh, what happened, that was Simchas Torah and it turned into a kind of a horror show. And uh, I want to reiterate that, you know, my parents were a Holocaust survivor. So when I'm a little kid, you know, some of that trauma is, is, is put towards uh, us, you know. And, uh, you know, I remember being a little kid thinking, uh, you know, what do I do when someone tries to break in the door, you know, and come take us away? Those are the kind of things that I had in my head as a little kid. So I know you guys... Uh, we have different ones that were in our church uh, from the city uh, who were in these kind of situations where people would get shot and hurt and and deal with all kinds of uh, horrible things. So I know that that trauma is all over the place, but uh, I've experienced that as well. And so I had a little PTSD in the beginning, but as, as you go through these different stages of grief, you get to a place where you want to get back in a routine. So I want you to pray that uh, we would be in a good routine, that Jerusalem would kind of get back to their footing is what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, you know, you guys know 
that the people in Gaza, these Palestinians, they need to know the truth so the truth would set them free. They need to be freed from these uh, people that are over them. We need to pray for their leaders, their, you know, the people in charge. And, and if they've gone over the line, it seems like they have, that God would put some new leadership in there. You need to pray for Israel's leadership and America's leadership. We're they're making all kinds of decisions right now that are huge. So you know how to pray. And I just ask you to pray because God never, Jesus never told his disciples that everything was going to be great. He said, in, in this world, you will have tribulation. That's what he said. Look at it. Look at it. In, I've said these things to you that in me you have might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. See verse 33? But take heart, I have overcome the world. So we can be thankful that Jesus promised and he has told us to take heart because he has overcome the world. So let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these um, good people at Metro Christian Worship Center and those that they reach. And we just ask you, Lord, uh, to give them peace as they pray. Help them to sort things out. Help them to know that you are the judge. Uh, a lot of times uh, we look at the TV and different things and and we're put in a position where, you know, what side are you on? You know, are you on our side? Are you on this side? Are you on this political side? That's, you know, are you on the Palestinian side? The Jewish people's side? <laughs> Lord God, I just have mercy on us. I thank you so much for Bishop Ray, who led us in a prayer of repentance. And, you know, he was asking us to basically some... Um, uh, 51, what David prayed, you know, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. We just ask you to get the confusion away. And we pray for our children. We pray for Noah, our little granddaughter. We pray for Rosalie, for her cousin Rosalie, a month apart, and for their parents, and to give them strength. And I thank you that they today are in they is moving day. They are moving from a little tiny apartment to a little bitty condo over in Simi Valley. And we just pray that you bless their house. We pray for peace on their house. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. We pray for peace in these cities in the United States with, with these protests and all this awful stuff. Help us, Lord. Help us to not teach these little ones, these little bitty ones to sin. Because it would be better that a, that a millstone would be hung around our neck, Lord. Help us to be, be righteous in the way we train, train our children. And I thank you that Bishop Ray is teaching these guys, you guys, to, to love um, Israel. Um, the, they're the apple of God's eye because he's made promises and, and God won't uh, renege on his promises. And I thank you so much, Lord, that you promise us that you'll be with us always, even at the end of the age. Thank you for giving us peace. And I pray that you give these guys wisdom as they pray on the walls. And they won't be silent day or night. I thank you that that's kind of like you, Shomer Yisrael, the watching of Israel who need their slumbers and their sleep. You back up one Psalm to Psalm 121. Look up to the hills from where I... Uh, uh, you know, unto the hills, I'll look, I'll look the, where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heavens and the earth. Um, God, you're the one that won't slumber or sleep. You know, I thank you that you, you let us sleep. Help us to get into a good routine, to sleep, to wake. We pray for the soldiers. We pray for the, the people that are uh, suffering under bombing and all kinds of things. Turn our eyes towards you. Turn our eyes towards you. Help all the the bad stuff, to shake us up enough to, to look at you, to, uh, to have the fear of the Lord that would be the beginning of wisdom. 
And we thank you, Lord, that you were able to accomplish th these things. And thank you for that last line. You said, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We thank you so much. Thank you, Bishop Green. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. comments about that. I'm going to ask a Pastor Ted, serve as executive pastor at Metro, to come and pray concerning both the U.S. and the global economy. Okay, God bless. Thank you, Bishop. Good evening, everybody. Well, I got the privilege to pray for our country and the, and the, and the economy and the world. And before I do, I want to give you a, a little lesson and paper money, as well as a lesson in silver and gold. Now, let me explain. Then I'll give you the scriptures and we'll pray. In the 1920s, when this was made, it's called a $20 gold piece. Today, and they had paper money then, but that paper money, $20, was equal to the $20 gold piece. Also in the 1920s, they had a silver dollar, and the papers was equal to a silver dollar. Today, in the 1920s, this gold, $20 gold piece, bread was, average cost of bread was five cents a pound. A loaf. This gold piece would buy 400 loaves of bread. In 1920, this silver dollar would buy 20 loaves of bread. Today, this $20, with the average price I checked on the internet, is $2 a loaf, would buy 10 loaves. And this $1 won't, would barely buy half a loaf. The reason I'm bringing it up is because in the scriptures, before I pray, you got Proverbs 11.1. 1. Dishonest business practices is something that God truly hates, but it pleases him when we apply the right standards of measurement. Then Proverbs 16.11 says, the Lord expects you to be fair in every business deal, for he is the one who sets the standards for righteousness. If this $20 was equal to a, a $20 gold piece in 1920, today, this $20, we should be able to buy a thousand loaves of bread. If this one dollar was equal to a, a, a silver dollar in 1920 today, we should be able to buy 225 loaves of bread. That tells us right here that something is wrong in our economy. And what's wrong is corruption. So now, as I pray, I asked the Lord, how do I pray for a corrupt economy? It's corrupt in the world. It's corrupt in the country. What, the reason these two were equal in, in, in 1920 is because the $20 bill was backed by a $20 gold piece. The same with the silver, the $1. But today, they call this fiat money. What backs it is the legal right of the government to print money and the printing press they use to print it. But it's not backed by gold or silver. It's not backed by what God calls wealth. So, Heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you. And we lift up the economy of our country. But most of all, Lord God, we lift up the church to you because you have an economy that overrides the economy that is in the world. It's called the economy of the kingdom of God. 
And that's the economy, Lord God, that we want to engage in. That's the economy that we're asking you, Lord God, to give our leaders, starting with our church, Lord God, and our politicians and our businessmen, give them some insight, Lord God, and grace them to begin to do business in an honest way that pleases you. So, Lord, apples will equal apples and oranges equal oranges. And so, Lord, we praise and we ask you, Lord God, to open up supply chains, open up doors, Lord God, for the church to enter in fully into the kingdom market, the kingdom economy. Because the world's economy is man-made, but the kingdom economy is God-made. And there is no lack, no cheating, no corruption in your economy. So, Lord, that's what we pray tonight. Lord, our country needs leaders, Lord God, that are fair-minded, that are godly. Even if they're not saved, they believe in Judeo-Christian principles of righteousness, Lord God, that honesty does carry the day and that corruption is wrong. And so, Lord, we ask that you raise up leaders in our country, even around the world, but God, that will bring a balance to the money that we use for goods and services in our economy. Because our economy is based on the money, on how we use it. And we need to be stewards, Lord God, stewards of what you have given us. And therefore, Lord God, we lift you this, this situation up to you. Lord God, only you can solve these problems. Only you can give us righteous leaders. Only you can give us witty ideals and wisdom on how to change this where a dollar, Lord God, is sufficient compared to what it is today. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you understand that what we're praying about tonight is being discussed every day, all day, down to an eighth of a cent, or an eighth, I'm sorry, an eighth of a percent, every single day. The love of money, not money, the love of money, root of all sorts of evil. And oftentimes, uh, we may be struggling with whether or not prayer really is going to make a difference. Like what Oswald Chambers said, was just listening to it tonight. Prayer is not preparing for the battle. Prayer is the battle. Yeah. That's where the fight really is. And what we're praying about tonight and moving into tonight, I know there are different kinds of uh, economic theories and political theories and social theory. We need the truth of God. That's where the freedom is. Amen. How many of you believe that? Can, let's welcome Pastor Sherman Poston. High Level Ministry is going to come as one of the UPLA pastors in the area from the Metro East. Uh, they, in addition to their, their work as pastors, he also has served in insurance for decades, and he's going to talk a little bit about the insurance, uh, health insurance particularly tonight, and we're going to lead us in prayer in regard to it. Amen. I want to be obedient. My time is running out already. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, I want to just read one scripture. It's 1 Peter 2 and 24. And it says, I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Bishop just said it well that I am an insurance man and, but I didn't come to talk to you about insurance. I came to talk to you about assurance. I need your help tonight. I'm not here to teach you anything. Like Bishop said, that some things just can't be taught. 
I need a few prayer warriors to stand up now, get on your feet. I don't care if it's just two in here, amen. Come on, hallelujah. Because we're starting to miss the facts. He said we repented because we allowed that stinking thinking to creep in. Some people are depending more on Dr. Scholes than Dr. Jesus. Come on now, come on, hallelujah. Come on, I need somebody to knock the rust off and let's get the praying and let's reach heaven together. Amen, come on, because if, 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 if God can open up the windows of heaven, one window, and, and pour us out a blessing that we can't receive that will flood us out, just think if we can just get the window cracked just a little bit, come on. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put what? 10,000. Amen, I got more people in here, amen. I got some warriors that will put on that helmet of salvation that would put on that breastplate of righteousness. Come on. Hallelujah. We got to reach heaven. We got to reach heaven tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. No pity pack. We got to reach heaven. God, I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. And if I'd rather be a fool for Jesus than a slave for the devil. Hallelujah. Come on, God. Hallelujah. Somebody help me tonight. Somebody help me reach heaven tonight. Hallelujah. I ain't got time to teach you. Hey, Hallelujah. We got to reach him. We got to reach heaven tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's got a sick mother at the house. Somebody's got a sick daddy at the house. Somebody's crippled. Somebody's lame. We got to cast the devil down right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Jesus asked his disciples, would you not pray with me just one hour? Come on. I just need one more minute. One more minute to reach heaven. Come on. Somebody can get healed tonight. Just off of your prayer. So, hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Hallelujah. It fell as much. Hallelujah. That means the red hot prayers. Hallelujah. Your red hot prayers. Your red hot prayers is going to reach heaven. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 I won't go back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I need healing in my body. Come on. I need healing in my mind, Jesus. Pull down the strongholds in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anything in this contrary to the word of God, pull it down right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What happened to the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Seeking God first. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Stop reaching for the medicine cabinet and start reaching for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. I'm not afraid of the devil. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid of the media. Hallelujah. I need Jesus. It's just a hook. It's just a hook. They tell you once you start taking the medicine, you can't get off of it. Hallelujah. I need a physician where I won't have any side effects. I won't have to read the whole bottle. Hallelujah. I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Your word will heal us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your word will heal us. You sent your word. Hallelujah. You didn't send the physician. God. God loves you so much that he will work through the doctors. Loves you so much that he will work through a bottle. But God wants his perfect will is for you to go to him and you be healed in the name of Jesus. God, we need your help today in here. We need your help today. Hallelujah. I won't let you go until you bless me, Lord. Somebody say, I won't let you go until you bless me, Lord. I won't let you go until you bless me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cry out to you, Lord. We cry out to you tonight. We thank you for hearing our cry. We cry out to you tonight. Our trust is not in our health system. We thank you for the doctors. We thank you for the nurses. We thank you for the medical teams. We thank you for the technology. But our trust is in you. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're the Lord who heals us. You're the Lord who delivers us. We trust you tonight, God. We believe you tonight, God. We bind the spirit that has convinced even the church that if a doctor says no, you are saying no. But we trust you tonight, God, with all of our heart. We believe you tonight. And I pray, Lord, that the spirit of healing, the ministry of Jesus, would be birthed afresh and anew in this generation, in this time, in this hour. May it be so, God. We believe you. There is none like unto you. Lord, we believe you. Lord, we believe you. Lord, we believe you. Lord, we believe you. Hallelujah. 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 One of the veteran nurses, one of the sisters is a veteran nurse, been nursing 30 some years, sent word to us that she was in a conference for nurses. Just stay on your feet, we're gonna keep praying. Hallelujah, she was in a conference for nurses and they announced that 900,000 medical personnel are planning to leave in the year 2024. And she says, she said, I believe that God is gonna get the nation's attention that he is the healer. Come on, somebody. We're gonna trust the Lord. Look, we gotta trust the Lord. We have to trust the Lord. We've gotta trust the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we trust with all of our heart tonight and we believe you. We thank you. We thank you. Once again, we thank you for everyone who studied, everybody who put in the time, but our confidence rests in you. You are our health care plan. Hallelujah. We bless you tonight. We, that's what the man of God is saying. That's what he's calling us to. You are our health care plan. Praise the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We bless you tonight. We're going to have to speed up a little bit, so I'm going to ask the, the rest of you that uh, will come to pray, just lift up the matter in prayer. You won't have time to explain it, but we're already in the place now of praying. Come on. Praise the name of Jesus. Elder Brad, would you come? He's going to pray for those who are poor and the ministry of the church for those that are poor. Come on, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Hallelujah. If you want to stay in the posture of prayer, Father God, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for those that are poor, those that are homeless, Lord God, those that are sleeping, Lord God, on bus stops, Father God, those that are sleeping on vents, Father, in the name of the Lord. Those that are working poor, multiple jobs, Lord, and still can't make the ends meet, Father. You see the brokenness, Lord. If you stay on the streets long enough, Lord, it affects your emotions. It affects your mind, Father God. We cry out for mercy, Lord God. Forgive us for overlooking those, Lord, that are homeless and hurting and broken, where there is no food in the house, Lord God. They can't make the bills meet, Lord. There's no electricity, Lord. No gas, Father God. We cry out for mercy, Lord God. We know that you love them. We know that they're important to you, Father God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and glory and honor, Lord. Open up our heart, Lord God, that we'll be able to touch those, Lord God, that are needy, Father. Your word declares, Father, out of Psalm 72 and 12, for he will deliver the needy when he cries. Lord, we cry out on behalf of the needy, Lord. We stand in a gap, Lord God. The poor also and him who has no helper, Lord. You are the help, Lord God. You are our help, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. As winter is coming, Lord God, you see the homes, Lord God, with no gas, Lord God, that can't even light the stove, Father God. Children are going to, to school with raggedy clothes on and being ridiculed, Lord. Merciful God, we ask for your mercy, Lord God. You are loving Father. You are tender in mercy. They're important to you. They're valuable to you, Lord God. 
God. Oh God, we thank you for the church, Lord God. The church is all over this city and nation, Lord. Is able to provide free food, Lord God, and clothing to help them make it through the month, Lord God. We thank you for the various programs, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. The policies that are being made, job training, Lord God, early childhood development, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord, for social security, Lord, unemployment insurance, Medicaid, Lord, to be able to purchase medicine, Lord. Merciful God, we bless your name, Lord. Yes, awaken the church, Lord. We come against the lullaby in the church, Lord. They're not invisible people, Lord. God, they're invaluable to you. They're valuable to you. They matter to you, Lord. So we bless you. And in closing, your word says, Lord, he will spare the poor and the needy and will save the souls of the needy, Lord. You called us to make a difference. We're the called out ones. We are the anointed ones in the earth. You called us to touch lives, to have an impact on lives, Lord. You called us to carry the gospel, Father God. Forgive us when we fail. Forgive us, Lord God, when we have not noticed what's on your heart, Father. Give us a heart like Christ Jesus, Lord. The Holy Spirit has come that we may be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. So we bless you, Lord, for allowing us to stand before your throne of mercy and grace. We bless you, Lord God, as we cry out to you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor because you are Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify. We worship you, O oh Lord, our God. Strong tower are you. We're praying for marriage and family. And there's four things the Lord want us to pray about tonight. More godly marriages. To be healed in our marriages. To save our marriages. And that marriages be restored through reconciliation. We pray. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray that the fellowship of this now spiritual unveiled mystery, that in the fullness of time you have demonstrated your will undeniably you made known to us, to generation and from generation, how you love your church. And may your glory invade our marriages to heal to save and be reconciled by your presence and your understanding of marriage and your purpose for marriages. Father, may marriage institution that you be created be no longer looked at as something that's not viable, something that's not purposeful. In the name of the Lord, we pray for a restoration of vibrant celebration and joy in marriages. In the name of the Lord, that what you designed it and portrayed it to be, in the name of the Lord, be restored in the house of God. We pray for righteous demonstration of oneness in the name of the Lord as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that there be a clearer understanding of your intentionality and your redemptive purpose when marriage is demonstrated. Save our marriages in the name of the Lord. Save them, oh God, as you created them to be full of your purpose in the name of the Lord. We pray for this spiritual revelation be caught by your church. Forgive us and cleanse us. For Lord, we don't declare anymore you are a jealous God you have no other God before you and so Lord we pray oh God that you would heal these marriages that which the enemy has thwarted and twisted in the name of Jesus the Christ we ask for your redemptive purpose be manifested afresh and anew may you receive our glory that's due your name God belong the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name
Father, we lift up the families before you, Lord God. We thank you, oh God, that we're not coming to a stone or a tree. Lord, you are the one that created families. So, Father, we pray for the fathers that they would not provoke their children to anger. Lord, we pray for the wives, oh God, that they would be wise women that would build their houses and they would not be foolish women to tear it down with their hands. Lord, we pray for the children, oh God, that they will obey their parents in the Lord. Lord, we thank you in the name of the Lord that every family in heaven and earth is named by you, oh God. And we thank you, God, that you will strengthen every family, oh God, by the power of your spirit in their inner man. Lord, bless the families, oh God. Lord, bless the men and women, boys and girls, all over the nation. Lord, I pray for those that are not saved, would they come to know you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that your ears are attentive to the prayer made in this place. We thank you for that, what you're going to do in the families, oh God, that you alone will be glorified, that you alone will be exalted. Hallelujah. What you give the Lord a hand of praise is he's going to respond in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift up the singles in the house, our singles in the body of Christ, Lord. We lift ourselves up before you. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that delights to show mercy. We posture ourselves before you tonight, Lord. We make intercession for each one among the singles, those who are single in Christ tonight. We lift ourselves up before you in your presence tonight, Abba, even asking you, to forgive us, Lord, to forgive where we've wandered, where the wandering eyes, oh Lord, where we've grown, even impatient, my Lord, I pray on this night, even this season, oh Lord, in this season that we have in you, for such a time as this for each one, oh Lord, that you would quicken by your spirit each one, our singles in Christ, oh Lord, to grow in the maturity that you have established, that you have planned every purpose, plan, and desire that you have for us to be accomplished for your glory. Forgive us, God, even to reset the appetites, oh Lord, even to forgive us where we have leaned on our own understanding. Even on this night, Lord, we do in your name and your authority, Lord Jesus, we speak to you, each one, each one, oh Lord, to call out, oh, to call out to him. You told us this in your word, Lord, to call out to you. You're the only one that can teach those great and mighty things. Lord, we posture ourselves before you tonight. We are praying, oh Lord, just for divine visitations, oh Lord, every plan and every purpose that you establish, each one for be fulfilled for your glory, oh God. Help us to be still and know that you are God, to be patient with your patience, trusting your time in every season in the lives of our singles. Let it bear its fruit for your glory, oh God, each one, oh Lord, their lives for your glory, their lives for your glory. We posture ourselves tonight and a calling out for help, O oh Lord, to stir hearts, to recaptivate hearts, to beat for only you to search our hearts, O oh Lord, in every way where hearts are divided, O oh God, in this season, this divine opportunity that we have. These are precious and priceless moments to turn back, to turn back. So we cry out, oh Lord, we lift ourselves before you for the full turn. Hearts fully yours for your glory, keeping pace with you, oh God. Deliver us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. We pray our lives for your glory. We desire to finish well, to steward well every season every season for your glory. So that's our posture tonight, Abba, before you. We just keep ourselves before you for your pruning, your growing, your equipping, the preparation for readiness in all things for your glory. Let it be so, Abba. Let it be so. Widows tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. 
we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, beginning in Exodus 22, you set the pace, oh God, for the children of Israel to protect the widow, to include them, Lord God. And so, Father, I pray for widows tonight, those that have lost their husbands. I don't care how long it has been, Lord God, that you would continue to comfort them, to protect them, to provide for them, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, you said, Lord God, you said you proved it when you died on the cross. You didn't leave your mother without, thank you God you didn't leave your mother who was a widow you didn't leave her without protection you gave her you willed her over to John you inferred her to John Lord God and so you identified you showed us how much you care for widows Lord God we thank you oh God that every person every in this house that are widows Lord God that they would know how much you love them in the houses that are represented oh God tonight that the people the widows will know that you love them that you care for them that they're not discarded Lord God I will save you Father God we lift lift back your word to you your promise oh God that you are committed you are committed to us oh God even in our older age oh God and we thank you God that you promised that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh God that's from the youngest to the oldest oh God and we are looking for it oh God and we are thanking you God that you're going to do a new thing with the older generation oh God and we thank you that there's going to be miracles God we're going to be healed we're going to be delivered we're going to be saved God and you're carrying us God as many God who are older in age are carrying for even for their own their own parents caring for their children caring for their grandchildren oh God we thank you God that they will know that you are carrying us God you are carrying God and you are able to carry us and them and father we pray now that even in your churches God that room would be made oh father God for the elder generation to come forth we call you to come forth come out of the wheelchairs come out of the oppression come out of the lack and come forth like Caleb and Moses and go take your mountain in the name of Jesus We're just continuing to pray for family and all the different facets tonight. I'm going to ask Elder Marshall to come back. We're going to lift up teenagers and then my wife, Pastor Brenda, is going to pray for the children in the city. This is a big, big, big issue. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 declares, There's no temptation. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and God is faithful he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear but when you are tempted he will also provide a way out so that you can endure we declare this over this city in the name of the Lord every reasoning every moral uh, corrupted society thinking concerning marriage concerning uh, uh, morality father we pray for an escape in the name of Jesus we lift up every teenager in this city in the name of the Lord that is rejected your standard Lord that is rejected your way those who are opposed to you God because of their because of culture and because of the society oh God Lord we pray in Jesus name that secularism and humanism and more relativism be broken today we pray oh God for a clear understanding in the name of Jesus a clear understanding of who you are in the name of Jesus Lord save our teenagers we pray for laborers in this city laborers in every neighborhood let them run into us oh God that salt and light let us encounter them in the name of Jesus when they're at school when they're on the in the store when they're walking in the in the markets God when they're standing around the corner let your light shine and let it break through the dark understanding concerning who you are we pray oh God save our teenagers oh Lord save them oh God deliver them from evil and the evil one in the name of Jesus the Christ oh God in the name of the Lord save them Jesus save them oh God save them oh Lord save them oh God hallelujah hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Will you join me in praying for our children? Father, we thank you so much for our children. We thank you most of all because you said in your word, children are a blessing. The heritage of the Lord, the fruit of the womb is his reward. So much is coming against our children. We have predators, Lord, on every way. Abortion, Lord, they're trying to kill them before they come out of the womb. God, I pray that you would come against this spirit of murder that wants to kill our children in the name of Jesus, where they're crucifying the truth in them, Lord. I pray that they would know the truth and the truth would make them free. The truth of the matter is that they belong to God. They're set apart for God. They're special. They're precious to God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, take away that mindset that says they can be easily discarded. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for families having a precious mindset for children, Lord. Parents loving their children the way they're supposed to love them. God, forgive us for not loving them well. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord, to let them know who they are in Christ. I pray most of all that they would know you and serve you all the days of their life. In the name of Jesus, may they grow in the fear and the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Use them mightily for your glory. Let this city be changed because of the children. In the name of Jesus, we know, Lord, you said that they are a blessing. And Lord, we want that to be a blessing, that they will be a blessing, that we will know that they are a blessing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for every child in this church, oh God, that they'll grow up and they'll be kings and princes, Lord. They'll be doctors, they'll be lawyers. In the name of Jesus, that you would use them in the political realm to change this nation. In the name of Jesus, let it start here in Missouri. Let it start here in St. Louis. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless you. There's none like you in all the earth. We bless your holy name. We'll be so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you for empowering parents, Lord, in the name of Jesus, empowering them with the word of God to put the word of God in their children, training them up in the way that they should go so that when they are old, they will not depart. In the name of Jesus, we claim every single one of them for the glory of God, for the power of God, for the purposes of God. In the name of Jesus, let it be so, God. We come against the strongholds of the devil that wants to their mind wants their sexual organs. We come against that in Jesus' name. Those lies that they are telling our children that they are a man when they are a woman and a woman when they are a man. We come against that in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is against you. We make no really accusations. We simply say the blood of Jesus is against you. The power of God prevails. You will be defeated in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're to stop believing the lies of Satan, that Satan is bigger than God. He's no, he's no match for God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are king. You are Lord. You are sovereign. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray now concerning the education system, the philosophy, the curriculum, the schools, strongholds of hell. The Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you now. Come on. Bless the Lord. We thank you today, Lord, that we're able to come before your presence. And in your presence is fullness of joy. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to take our places in heavenly places tonight to do warfare on the enemy. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight that we do war tonight. We thank you, hallelujah, for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. For the coming against our, our children in the education. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the philosophies of education. Hallelujah. How they've come in to influence our babies.
babies with their curriculums and things that are from God and how they've taken our babies and they're teaching them all kinds of things, alternative lifestyles and living in it, that everything is right and right is wrong and wrong is right. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against the U.S. and the Education Department, the Department of Education. We come against those leaders in the name of Jesus and we declare that Jesus is Lord for our weapons are not carnal but mighty through God through the pulling down of stronghold everything that exalts itself higher than the name of Jesus every vain imagination oh God we submit it to the cross today we submit it to the cross today the blood of Jesus prevails the wickedness to come to influence our babies to tell them hallelujah that it's okay for their teachers to wear dresses and their males oh God we come against the forces of hell oh God we come against the forces of Malak oh God and Issachar we come against those spirits God in the name of Jesus we push back the darkness tonight we push it back tonight hallelujah oh God for the future of our babies when we're talking about the ones that are in high school we're talking about our elementary schools we're talking about those babies we're talking about those babies right now oh how the curriculum has changed from the days from the times that it was in the past but oh God with the education today oh God we ask first of all God also that you will forgive us because some of us as parents we left education up to the system but Lord I'm asking you tonight oh God to convict our parents to have them call on you Lord to bless those babies before they leave the house oh God in the name of Jesus oh God we asking you Lord oh it's not just about the education system it's about our responsibility those children as she said before ours God has given them to us and they're a blessing so God we asking you tonight God oh God that you would give us as parents uh, curriculums that's godly oh God that you would give us the philosophies that are God in the name of Jesus bless our homeschools Lord in the name of Jesus we ask it now that your blood of Jesus will cover them Holy Spirit we asking you tonight uh, we know that you are great you're a great big God and you are creative oh God give us creative ideas uh, for our schools Lord uh, oh God in the name of Jesus oh God that we can teach our babies uh, in the mighty name of Jesus nothing's too hard for you nothing's impossible with you nothing is impossible we ask you tonight God oh God is one voice uh, and one body God is one voice tonight we cry out to you oh you said Lord in your word if we call on you you will answer and you will show us great and mighty things so God I'm asking you tonight Lord even to give the people God in the name of Jesus other parents of the start schools Lord give them a heart oh God to be able to create things for the children so they can be able to learn in an environment that's not wicked in an environment is not influenced by the evil one in an environment that is producing product pro, produ, producing things that they need to have for this education for this world and for this time so father we thank you tonight we thank you tonight lord we thank you tonight we thank you for the answer we ex we anticipate your answer god we're not praying in the mist we're not praying in the mist we're praying in the holy ghost tonight oh god we asking you lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for the answers. There are teachers in this room right now. There are principals in this room right now. Oh, anoint them that's fresh and anew. Oh God, in our schools, and our churches. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, that the philosophies of the evil one will not pervert our babies for this next generation. For they were born to worship God. That's what they were born for, to worship God in perfect praise for their generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I says the Lord says, lift up your hands. He's going to open a door of utterance to give to you this week. Hallelujah. To make him know, don't run from it. Don't run from it. He's going to give you, even tonight, God's going to give you an opportunity to make him know. Father, we thank you to give you the glory and the honor. We thank you for the opportunity to share the good news about who you are. And we expect divine deliverance and healing and salvation, oh God. We expect your counsel and your wisdom, oh God. We give you praise. It'll be an honor to work with you. You are co-laborers. We are co-laborers with you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for every opportunity. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elder, Elder Marshall was not in the back room before we came out, but that was the exact word that the Lord had given the pastors as well. Father, we just lift up our hearts to you. We thank you for the confirmation of your word tonight. We receive what you are doing in our midst. We praise you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just kind of want to press in a little bit more on this spiritual warfare aspect of dealing with uh, what we're calling truth wars tonight. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah, Ask this question, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? If we put that in modern language today, you would say, whose narrative will you believe? And the second part of our prayer today, tonight is, in order to believe the right thing, it takes more than logical reasoning. It takes the revelation of the Lord. To believe the right thing, there must be a connection with the revelation of the Lord. What's missing in our society today is, 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 a, is a, what's missing is a connection when God is actually speaking to you. So Father, tonight we stand with you against all of these narratives that have been set forth in all of these philosophies and the so-called truth war that has left a nation bereft and broken fill with the claims of my truth and your truth father we pray for the truth to be revealed the fresh and anew and that there would be a realization that the truth of god is being revealed come on lift up your voice right now cry out to god hallelujah jesus the lord the word of god says in isaiah uh, from that passage that when this would happen the lord himself would manifest he would take up a, come on, he'd take up the cloak and he would fight for righteousness. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome your fight. We welcome your role in this war. We've tried to fight it through reasoning. We've tried to fight it through natural intelligence. We tried to fight it, Lord, through philosophical ways of doing things. But we pray and we receive the ministry of Jesus stepping forth in your righteousness, defying, defying the rationale of the world. We believe your narrative. We believe your report. We believe your report. We trust you to reveal your arm. Reveal your arm in this hour. Reveal it. We are open to the revelation of Jesus. We are sick and tired of the rationale of man, of the human, even in the church, God. We're drowning. We're drowning in the reasoning of man. We pray for the revelation of the arm of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, do the part that the well-crafted argument cannot do. For the eyes and the contents is blind. We trust you to pierce the darkness. Break through in the name of Jesus. Somebody cry out to God with me tonight. If you believe God for it, we believe God for it. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. We stand with you against the forces of hell. Not only working through radical Islam, but working through radical atheism. In the name of Jesus, every pastor, every preacher, every church that has been targeted 
by the enemy slated for assassinations in the name of Jesus we pray for the Holy Ghost we pray for Holy Ghost surveillance we pray in the name of Jesus not only in church buildings but in homes let the will of our God be wrought in the name of Jesus don't let the devil don't let him outwit your servants don't let him outwit the church in the any longer anymore we've been outwitted for decades I pray for the wisdom that outwits outwits the wisdom of hell in Jesus name make an open display I hear that tonight God's gonna make an open display he's gonna make an open display of the devil he's gonna make an open display he's gonna show him to be the fool that he is he's gonna show him to be the defeated one that he is come on somebody bless the Lord with me tonight hallelujah hallelujah we pray for the manifestation of the truth in righteousness in love that which the world cannot refute. We're postured already to give you the glory. It's not the glory of a man. It's not the glory of a woman. It's not the glory of our talent. It's not the glory even of the giftings. God, only for your glory, let your glory be revealed. We're sick and tired of the stage. We want Hollywood out of the church. We want Broadway out of the church. We want Nashville out of the church. We want it out. We want entertainment out. In the name of Jesus, we reject the Apollo spirit. We reject that drama spirit. We reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. We receive the purity of the Holy Ghost in our hearts in this place. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is in yours. We submit to you. And we reject the spirit of murder and the drive-bys in the name of the Lord. Your Soros, Lord, is not our enemy. We know who's behind your Soros. We stand with you. The spirit of murder comes from the chief murderer himself, the devil, Satan, a liar, and a murderer from the beginning. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to deal with the chief murderer. In the name of Jesus, in St. Louis, bring him down. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, pray with me in the Holy Ghost. If you're not used to this, don't be afraid. Come on. In the name of the Lord, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. In the, oh my God. Oh my God, we welcome. We welcome the move of the Holy Spirit. We welcome what you have already postured to do. God, in the name of Jesus. We welcome the myriad of angels that you've already released. We receive their ministry. You give charge over them, Lord. We don't give charge. We echo the charge you give them. But God, you give charge over them. And we receive the angels you've already dispatched. Bring down the drug dealer. Bring them down. Bring down the cartels. Bring them down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the glory of God be revealed in this city. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We come against it in the name of Jesus, pitting religion against religion, man against woman. We bind this delusional spirit that tells men they're women and women they're men. We bind that delusional spirit. We love the truth. We love the truth. We love the truth. Your word says that you send a spirit of delusion for those who won't accept the love of the truth. We accept your truth. We accept the truth of God. Truth of God be prevalent. Reign in Satan. Lewis, reign in the metro area, reign in the Midwest, reign in the United States of America. We stand against this delusional spirit. Somebody pray, 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 pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand with you. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. The Lord rebukes you now. We bring no railing accusation. The Lord rebukes you now. We silence your voice at every level, every level. God, speak to Tashara Jones. Speak to her, God. Speak to this woman over this city. Give her a visitation from heaven. It doesn't matter where she came from. I pray you speak to her spirit. Show her what she's dealing with. 
give her the courage to embrace the revelation of God in the name of the Lord beyond where she is we trust you for it every mayor over every municipality the governor over this state in the name of the Lord we know we do not wrestle against flesh and blood it's against principalities and powers good over 30 some years ago we found out that when this city was founded the men that founded this city came out of New Orleans one was cohabiting with a witch they dedicated this land in light of their witchcraft and their occults but the Lord Jesus Christ breaks every covenant we break every covenant over this city over this region that came out of hell deliver us deliver us deliver us deliver us does it make any sense it's almost like the people in this city are dwarfed spiritually God we call them into full-grown growth in the name of Jesus we will hear the gospel and obey it we will hear the gospel of the kingdom and walk in it we will arise and walk as sanctified set apart uh, righteous ones loving ones in Jesus thank you Jesus glory to Jesus yes yes hallelujah God we worship you tonight but I hear the Lord saying you men who are senior pastors standing here today for your cries have reached heaven says the Lord and my heart bleeds for you in the stint that I am going not to give you houses and cars. I'm not going to give you the material things, but I'm going to give you favor, says God. I'm going to give you influence. I'm going to give you the kind of influence that will bring persecution, but I have overcome it, says God. Trust me, because you are men that I'm going to use in this city to bring forth a righteousness that is not here, but yet to come and will be seen, says God. For I have determined in my heart, says says the Lord, that in the midst of a city that is unrighteous, I will establish a righteous people who will do my will and they will bring people into my kingdom so that they will be disciple and then I will make changes that you have always cried and asked for, says God. Yes and amen. We receive the word. Come on, let's stand together. We've already gone over a little bit, but thank God. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his faithfulness. Come on, just lift your voice. Lift your voice. There's some things on your heart that you need to cry out. Come on, God hears us all at the same time. Lift your voice and begin to pray for this city. Pray, pray, pray. And believe God. Receive by faith what God has already spoken to you about. We thank you for it. We thank you, God, for the intergenerational mix. We thank you for destroying this war that keeps us from ever operating. Make us, Lord, like even Joshua's day, where the generations work together. We pray for it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the gospel go forth in the name of the Lord our God. And Lord, as we honor you and honor your word in feeding and clothing and visiting those that are in jail and in prison, and for honoring those that are poor amongst us and the widows and all that has been prayed about and more tonight, we thank you for the open door that you spoke to us about. As we're going, as we're giving, as we're sharing, as we're pouring out, we thank you for the sensitivity that you're giving us and for the conviction of the Spirit to minister you and to witness, to call others into a relationship with you and in so doing, call them into the kingdom of God. We love you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. It is the power. And Lord, in every way that we've got ahead of us, we've got a different gospel where politics and our social concerns and our economic concerns have become the end point rather than a means to an end. Forgive us. Forgive us. Lord, you are the God of justice. You want justice in all those areas. But there is no greater justice than being called into a peace relationship with you. Father, we pray. We pray for peace in our city as we have peace with you, as we come into right relationships with you. And for everyone that is, has, has rightly pointed out to the church in, in our lives where we've not been faithful, we have not fed, we have not clothed, we have not been concerned, we have passed by, forgive us in the name of Jesus. We, we recommit ourselves to doing that. But in every way, Lord, that that, that has become the end goal and we're leaving people without the gospel, forgive us 
in the name of Jesus we pray for people's lives to be changed by coming into relationship with you we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ we reject the negative aspects of the prosperity gospel in this thing just to be rich we get away from that thing Lord we know that we know the cattle on thousand hills is yours God all of that but we're not in it for the money we're not in it for those things we want your will to be done and insofar as your will is our financial prosperity we thank you for it but we're not seeking financial prosperity we seek you and the will of God everything you bring into our hands every nickel every dime is sanctified in advance for your will and your purposes you can trust us with millions God we will do what you say with it but we will not seek it we will not run after it we'll not give of our time totally for it we cry out to you we long for you we need you God hallelujah even some of the poorest among us Lord have televisions and everything else up in their houses hanging off the walls we need you we trust you we believe you for the grace of God in the name of Jesus change our zip codes change it and finally Lord we pray for our ministry even amongst those who are internationals among us people who've come from other parts of the world and they're here in St. Louis. You send them here, among other things, to receive the gospel, to hear it and receive it. We commit to ministry there and ministering to them in the ways that you strategically call us and all around the world where you call us, to the nations of the earth, the 195 nations and the other 40 plus territories. Help us to find our place in the name of Jesus. As 5G takes over and smart cities are built, I pray that you would plant us all over the world in Jesus' name for the glory and the honor of our God. Let it be so. We thank you, Father. We praise you now. As we leave this place tonight, we go with confidence in our spirit that you are with us. You will keep us. You will guide us. You will direct us. Help us to walk in ways that honor you, bring you glory and our benefit to everyone that's around us, even if they don't see it. Bring them into the light of it. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, let's bless his holy name. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise in our spirit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Come on, sing it with me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. And all that is within me. And all that is within me. things come on he has done hallelujah tell somebody he praise Jesus glory he has great things bless his holy name bless the Lord come on bless the Lord oh Sing over this city, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Now prophesy it. He has done great things. Come on. He has done. Hallelujah. He has Jesus, he has done, bless his holy Father, we thank you for what you've done in our midst and praise you for what you're doing, yes. One more very important announcement. Everybody know what I'm talking about? At the count of three, uh, our bishop tomorrow, 
November 9th. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Have a wonderful evening. The Lord bless you and keep you. Don't forget, we're back together Saturday morning, Saturday morning for the workshops and the special small business fair. You don't want to miss that. And then Sunday, Bishop Wellington Boone will be with us. God bless you, protect you, watch one another as you go in Christ's name. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. <laughs>